Hi folks. So back in February, I made this video and it was sort of a reaction piece to, uh, with a, basically MSNBC had been running a series of promos featuring various members of their primetime lineup. And it seemed to me like MSNBC was just showcasing ignorance. And I wondered why they would do that. And I featured several of the different promos in my video and reacted to them. One was a promo featuring Lawrence O'Donnell, who hosts The Last Word. And, well, here, let me just play it for you. This is the O'Donnell promo in its entirety and my reaction to it in the video I made back in February. This whole class warfare argument is over four percentage points in the tax code. Now, when you have no defense against paying fairer tax rates, what do you have to do? You have to come up with a lie. You have to come up with a slogan, class warfare. Now, that bit of crazy deserves a video all its own, but Obviously, I'm not going to be making that anytime soon because I've got so much work to do. Well, now I have some time, and I wanted to kind of do a breakdown of that promo. So let's take the first part of it. This whole class warfare argument is over four percentage points in the tax code. Okay. Larry, um... It's not just about four percentage points in the tax code. Uh, yes, the you know what what uh, the president and Democrats have proposed is letting the Bush tax cuts expire. So that would mean that the top rate would go from 35 percent, the top individual income tax rate, to 39.6 percent. The bottom rate would rise from 10 percent to 15 percent. The rate on long-term capital gains would go uh, from 15% to 20%. So it's actually five percentage points, not four. But the people, including myself, who are using class warfare to describe the Democrats' antics aren't just taking issue with that tax increase. This is about something more than that. This is about this whole left-wing campaign strategy to try and divide Americans based on class, or at least perceived distinctions in class, these arbitrary lines they're drawing, splitting people up and trying cynically, I believe, to convince one group of Americans that another group of Americans is living high off the hog and succeeding at their expense. There's not an ounce of truth to any of it, but at least some Democrats, including the president, think that it will be a successful campaign strategy. I mean, they must think it'll be successful, otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. And I have written about this in the past on my blog, and I've also discussed this in other videos that I've filmed and posted on YouTube. But let me give you at least one specific example of this class warfare, at least what I perceive as class warfare. This is something I actually found on the Obama campaign's website under the heading, Millionaires Should Pay Their Fair Share. Listen to this. Here's what you need to know about our opponent in this election, Mitt Romney. He would actually raise taxes on millions of middle-class families, but hand windfalls to corporations and millionaires like him who don't need it. Mitt Romney would give millionaires and billionaires an average tax cut of $250,000, while families with kids making less than $40,000 a year would, on average, actually see their taxes go up. And Romney wants to protect the loopholes and special deals that allow millionaires like him to pay a lower tax rate than the middle class. 
It's up to us to fight back. Add your name right now to join President Obama and say support an America where everyone does their fair share, plays by the same rules, and has a fair shot at success. Now, they offered no evidence to back up what they're saying there, probably because they know it's mostly bullshit. But... If that's not a clear-cut enough example of class warfare for you, Larry, then here is a clip from an Obama campaign ad or web video. I don't know, something. Roll it. President Obama's clean energy initiatives have helped create jobs for projects across America, not overseas. What about Mitt Romney? As a corporate CEO, he shipped American jobs to places like Mexico and China. As governor, he outsourced state jobs to a call center in India. He's still pushing tax breaks for companies that ship jobs overseas. It's just what you'd expect from a guy who had a Swiss bank account. Oh my God, a Swiss bank account. Wow. That's, that's, that doesn't sound like it affects me in the slightest, but I guess I'm supposed to think that's bad. You know what, uh, Andrea Tanteros had a, a great uh, reaction to this. I, I, I'm just going to play what she said in response to this ad. Here's what she said. Okay, so apparently I'm supposed to care more about Mitt Romney does with his money than what President Obama does with our taxpayer money, Eric. My sentiments exactly. And by the way, there's in that ad, they criticized Romney for outsourcing state government jobs to other countries. Anyway, uh, look, Larry, if you weren't aware of this, then I suggest you reconsider your position. But if you're so obtuse as to not see the manifest class warfare in these examples. And I'm sorry, I mean, I, I, I can't provide you an example of, you know, somebody on your own network saying something as blatant as uh, middle class workers are getting chipped away at because the wealthiest Americans aren't paying their fair share. This is just a classic example of how middle class Americans, the workers out there are getting chipped away at because the wealthiest Americans aren't paying their fair share. I mean God bless MSNBC. You know, if it weren't for MSNBC, then a lot of the attacks on the American left from uh, the right would be straw man arguments, mostly. But uh, you know, to my fellow righties out there, if you're looking for a real life example of any negative left-wing stereotype, then you can probably find one on MSNBC. So, anyway, that's enough. Uh, there, there was more to that promo. What, what, else, what else did he say in that promo? Now, when you have no defense against paying fair tax rates, what do you have to do? Okay, um, fairer tax rates. According to Lawrence O'Donnell, raising the tax rates to go back to where they were, I guess in 2001, if that's what he's talking about, would in his mind be fairer. So let's talk about this. When George W. Bush took office, the top individual income tax rate was 39.6%. The bottom rate was 15%. The rate on long-term capital gains was 20%. Now, there were two separate major tax acts passed under George W. Bush. The first was... No, 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 not now. Not now. Okay, so we passed this thing called the... Economic Growth and Tax Relief Reconciliation Act in 2001, or EGTRA. And basically, the effect of this was to create a new bottom individual income tax rate of 10% instead of 15%. And it cut the top tax rate, the top individual income tax rate, from 
39.6% to 38.6%. It also phased out the marriage penalty and some other things. It, it was a middle-class tax cut. And uh, then two years later, in 2003, we had the second round of Bush tax cuts in the form of the Jobs and Growth Tax Relief Reconciliation Act, or and what that did was it cut the top individual income tax rate from 38.6% to 35%, and it also cut the capital gains rate from 20% to 15%, and it tinkered with some other stuff in the tax code too but eh, you know it was the one that was tarred as a tax cut for the rich now, so we've got lower taxes on everybody and the result was interesting in 2001 that was the last year we had a budget surplus budget surplus that year was about 128 billion dollars and uh, we were taking in just under $2 trillion in revenue. That was in 2001. So we passed EGPRA, and we end up seeing a decline in revenues, in part due to the lower tax rates, in part due to the recession, which was, of course, compounded by 9-11, and then the rash of corporate scandals in 2002. And uh, we ended up bottoming out at just under uh, revenues to the government uh, ended up uh, in 2003 were just uh, under 1.8 trillion. So by that time we had a deficit and uh, you know, there was a big fight about you know cutting taxes when we had a deficit and that sort of thing. But President Bush and, and the Republicans, and a few Democrats, believed it was the right thing to do to jumpstart the economy and also that it would lead to economic growth, and they were right. Uh, in fact, uh, the economic growth that it engendered actually resulted in revenues to the government just taking off. We went from collecting less than $1.8 trillion in fiscal year 2003 to collecting nearly $2.6 trillion in revenue in the fiscal year 2007, just four years later. It was a huge increase in revenues. And um, I'd like to go into more detail. I don't want to bore you with this, but uh, you can go to my website, go to my website, and, the, and there's some uh, articles. I've written extensively about this in articles that I've posted on my website on the Ideas Center page, so go there. And so basically what we have as a result of these so-called Bush tax cuts is everybody's taxes are lower and the government is collecting more revenue. At least it was until the recession hit. The recession, uh, to give you an idea of, of how big a toll it took on the government, uh, the government collected about $2.6 trillion in 2007 and 2008, and then it just, the revenues just sank. And uh, for fiscal years 2009, 2010, and 2011, we ended up collecting in each of those years about $2.1 or $2.2 trillion, very, uh, very much less than, than uh, we had been under George W. Bush. But uh, the fact remains that the immediate effect of the so-called tax cut for the, the rich, the, the, the one that, that we're fighting over, extending now, was lower taxes, economic growth, and more revenue to the government. So Larry O'Donnell seems to be saying that fairer tax rates are higher tax rates that would result in the government taking in less revenue, economic growth would not be as big, and yet somehow that's fairer. He'll have to explain that to me. I guess that, that's something that I just don't understand. But um, uh, what was the end of that ad, the promo? You have to come up with a lie. You have to come up with a slogan. Class warfare. Okay, I'm honestly not sure. I've listened to this 
at least half a dozen times whether he's saying lie or line there. The, 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 let, let's play that again. You have to come up with a lie. Yeah, I can't tell. But either way, uh, class warfare is more than just a line or a slogan. And as far as, you know, if he said lie, then, well, this is just a common tactic of the left. You know, they know that truth is not on their side. They know that reality is not on their side. So when they've got nothing else, they just uh, tar people who are just countering their arguments with truth, uh, liars. They tar them as liars. Anyway, so I guess that about does it for this video. As I said, do check out my blog. There's some articles on there having to do with taxes. There's a lot of other articles on there that you might be interested in reading. really like to get... Some of you have been reading the articles and commenting on my blog, and thank you for that. I'd like to get more people commenting on there. Uh, also, follow me on Twitter, at Right Wing Genius. I still can't believe that nobody took that name. All this time, I've, all this stuff I've been doing with the website and the blog and these YouTube videos, and no one went on Twitter and, and signed up for the Right Wing Genius username. That's, uh, that, well, anyway. So I'm on Twitter now, uh, but, um, Ah, that about does it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, don't mess with the right-wing genius.